Joining us, I'm Amy Burkett. After just over a year in office, how's Charlotte's new mayor doing? What's her biggest controversy? Her proudest accomplishment? And what's next on her agenda? They're the questions that could affect all of us, and tonight we get some of the answers. Carolina Impact's Jeff Saunier sits down with Mayor Vi Lyles one-on-one -on -one at the Government Center for a look back at year one, a look ahead to year two, and maybe beyond. Yeah, Vi Lyles is the new Charlotte mayor who's not really that new here at the Government Center. Not when it comes to knowing the city's history, knowing the city's problems, and in particular, knowing who to call and hopefully how to get things done here. We have a bright future ahead, and I am proud to be your mayor. Vi Lyle's first year leading the city comes after more than 30 years serving the city, working with 10 previous mayors on the Charlotte City Council, and before that on the city staff. First mayor you worked under as a staffer, who was that? John Bell. He could always tell a great story. And, you know, telling a story is what people remember. You're in charge of a different kind of city than back in the days of John Belk or Harvey Gant or even more recently than that. It's a lot more diverse. It's a lot more polarized. Oh, absolutely. Um, I had a meeting with Harvey Gant and I said, one of my goals is to be what you, do what you did. Harvey could listen to 11 different opinions and at the end of it, he could make everybody feel like the decision was theirs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to be mayor and you have to make tough decisions, but you have to really care about the community. So the time that you spend outside of this office is to work with everyone to make sure that they understand. I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. Not everybody understands one of Mayor Lyle's early decisions to push hard for Charlotte to host next year's Republican National Convention, even as Democrats who supported Lyles for mayor were pushing back. We have a moral obligation to say no. I do want Charlotte to host a Republican National Convention someday. I do not want that day to be in the summer of 2020. Thank you. You managed to steer clear of most controversy in your first year as mayor, but probably the biggest controversy was with your own party, with the whole RNC. Being trusted and authentic in, in yourself as in this job is very, very important. We've told people that we would be willing to do this and we were doing it for the right reasons. Those reasons were to showcase Charlotte's values, our diversity, our ability to welcome people with different opinions. Let's go forward. I think that what I didn't realize was the number of people that really weren't around for the Democratic Convention. Didn't see the economic impact, didn't see people working and making twice as much as they had made in a week doing that kind of thing. They only saw the politics, they didn't see the benefits. I think that they saw the benefits, but they weren't as real. When you've gone through it, you see that reality. Here's another reality that Lyle saw as a city council member that she inherited as mayor. Protests in the streets about the police and the problems facing Charlotte's lowest income neighborhoods, and mostly about not being heard. I try not to judge, and I try not to say, I'm here to tell you something that you have to believe. What I'm here to do is to share the information that we know. And I believe that's the only way our community is going to come together. You have got to have relationships in this community that you can call and you can say, this is what we know so far. I never say this is what we know, period. What Lyles heard during those protests and what she still hears today as mayor is that Charlotte's prosperity is out of reach for many citizens, especially when it comes to finding good jobs or good schools or an affordable place to live. Lyle says $50 million in new city funding for more housing is just a start. You know, this housing has, has been something that's very, very important to me, but I've worked on it for a very long time. And sometimes you can kind of get stuck in that place. The thing that I am most proud of is that when we were talking about our housing referendum last year, I knew that wasn't enough to really move the ball. The work with our private sector community to say we will support you in this, I believe that is the achievement that I'm most proud of a step forward, let's put it that way. This is a step forward because we are working with um, people that are engaged. Now it always helps 
that we're in a good economy right now, that our city is growing and people want to be a part of that growth. They want to see that energy. They want to see the opportunity and do something that's significant. You've got a lot of new council members serving, yeah. um, which can be both positive and negative when, it, you know, when you're trying to get things done. I think what you're seeing is the willingness to talk about what we aren't doing instead of what we are doing. And so the idea that council members advocate for what's not happening, that's a menu. Before, it was kind of like, here's your dinner. You eat what's on the plate. And that's not the case anymore. You have choices, and this community is making those choices. And if we can talk about that in the community, that's if the community supports us, then we will be able to figure out how to pay for it. And if we can get those folks into the economy and they can have a family and a safe place to live and, and their kids can go to good schools, that's all we all want. That's what I want for my grandchildren and I want for every child in this community. So your biggest accomplishment is also, I guess, your biggest piece of unfinished business. It is. We've got a lot to do, but I feel that the, mom the momentum in this city is very positive. I, I'm not out front in front of it. I'm just pushing behind every day. Jeff joins us in the studio now. Jeff, I have to ask the question. Is she talking about running for re-election? Yeah, we asked her the question. She said yes. I don't know that she's made a formal announcement yet. So probably a lot of what we heard in our story we'll hear over the next couple of months as part of a campaign. You know, it's interesting. She bickers a lot with her fellow Democrats on city council. They don't always see eye to eye. It'll kind of be interesting to see if, if she does have a challenger, either in the general election or the primary, if it might be one of those um, council members that uh, oftentimes find themselves on different sides of the same issues with her. But uh, for now, at least, she's uh, very popular, and uh, there's no one out there, Republican or Democrat, that's talking about running against her. Well, and she did a very bold move by supporting the RNC. Yeah, that um, was probably a little bit unexpected on the part of a Democrat, but uh, as she said, you know, sometimes you put politics aside for the good of the city. And also it's about making promises and keeping promises. Uh, a lot of the folks, a lot of the opposition to the RNC came after some of the decisions had already been made. And I think that uh, it was more, as, as it was as much about credibility as it was about politics. And again, if you were here for the Democratic Convention, you saw what it did for our economy. Um, as she said in the story, a lot of the folks who opposed the Republican Convention weren't here to see what the Democrats did for Charlotte, and she's hoping the Republicans do the same. You know, she talks about being uh, pushing from behind <laughs> instead of being out front. You know, from a political standpoint, a lot of people might say that's a very intentional uh, political answer. But just seeing Vi and knowing her, she's so relational, she's great to be around. I'm not sure I would say that. I don't know if she's a natural politician. It might be a political position, but I don't know if it's a calculated kind of thing. You get the feeling when you talk to Mayor Lyles that um, she sees problems that the city's facing, not necessarily as a Republican way to fix them or a Democratic way to fix them. She seems to get past the party in a lot of cases or sometimes past the squabbles within her own party to find answers. That's That comes from working more than 30 years at City Hall before right. becoming you know, one of the folks that are elected at City Hall. So she's seen it from both sides. That's a lot of experience and a lot of uh, deal making that she brings to the table. One of the other things in the past Charlotte has uh, not had the best relationship <laughs> no. with our legislative friends in Raleigh. No. That seems to be doing a little better. Yeah, it couldn't be much worse than it was two years before Mayor Lyles with the whole HP2 debacle and, and Charlotte versus Raleigh. Uh, again, um, it's about mending fences uh, and it's about style. Uh, Vi Lyles, by going forward on the RNC, made a lot of friends among the Republicans in Raleigh. They saw her as being less political than her predecessor. Um, she's managed to avoid controversy, as we mentioned. And um, when you avoid controversy, you also avoid the tension that sometimes happens between Charlotte and Raleigh. She knows that there's mostly Republicans in Raleigh she's got to deal with. Um, if you go picking fights, then you're probably going to get a fight. She's trying to mend those fences now, I think, and, and doing it for the good of the city, for the most part. Great information. Thanks so much, Jeff. We appreciate the inside story. Thanks. Long before most